afternoon, everybody. Well, we thought we were having a hangout with Martin Leakey, but anyway, hopefully we're rearranging that one and big hugs to Martin. Um, we're here with James and Nigel, and we're having a Judith hangout. <laughs> yeah, we're having a Judith hangout because James is Judith. <laughs> yeah, he's under Judith. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a Judith today. Anyway. Good evening. I'm from Essex. In case you couldn't tell, my given name's a legal fiction and I've got a mainstream media addiction and I'm not doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> Just to put everybody out of their misery, it's his mum's name. He's using his mum's account. <laughs> ah, ah, it, it, uh, half and half. Ah, ah, not, not, Karen, I think you missed me. At all, are you, James? Hmm? You're not a Judith, are you, after all? No. <laughs> Karen, I think you're missing something. He just what? said he's from Essex and his name's Judith, so he's coming as an Essex girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I'm actually getting a bit concerned, really. I mean, you've got, you've got, the, you've got those horrible reality things like The Only Way is Essex, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just frightened that it's going to be detrimental to the, to the tourist trade of Essex. <laughs> Give it a bad <laughs> My daughter loves that program. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> so let's get this in perspective. So nice. I see it's not. You live in you live in Norfolk. It's it's a joke. It's it's a it's I was messing around with the lyrics from Villa Ricky Dicky by Ian Dury. All right, okay. He's actually very good. Um, he did a song called Oh Mr. Peanut and think of a, a certain peanut farmer who became president. And the lines go, Oh Mr. Peanut, I don't like you at all. Not only are you poisonous, but your eyes are much too small. So stick your finger up your nose and leave it there for keeps. I hate you, Mr. Peanut. You really make me weak. <laughs> There's also, it, it, in, within the song, he says, for sure, Monsieur, and I hear mine hair, you're, certainly you're cracked. He, that was like a, a dig at the European Union as well, France and Germany. Way ahead of his time. Hmm. Wow. Well, but the jury's out now, I'm afraid. Jane says the jury's out. Jury out. Yeah, Ian Dury, Ian Dury jury. <laughs> mm. Do you remember that? Um, oh God, I'm going back years now. I haven't, I haven't lived in the UK for more than twenty years. But do you remember that? Um, there was an advert, and it was it was for um, some kind of chicken or turkey stuffing, and it was like a chef with a like like a band aid, like, like a plaster over his mouth, and he was he'd, he'd peel it back and he go Norfolk, and then put it back on. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I remember the Swedish chef, the only one I know is the Swedish chef. Yeah, that's the only one I know <laughs> from the Muppets. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I was going to well, throw a little. I mean, the, the, the pioneer of um, cookery programs was the best, Fanny Credit. I, I often think of Fanny. So. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, did, did you see what Martin posted up? I mean, it's written in stone. <laughs> the headstone said, in, to the memory of. Harry Fiddler, and, and then also to his wife Fanny. So he was a Fanny Fiddler, Harry Fanny Fiddler. <laughs> I I remember I remember years ago. Her, her husband was called Johnny, right? Johnny Craddock. And um, I remember when I was I was about eight or nine years old, and um, Fanny Craddock was doing this uh, cookery show, and she was she was making pancakes or, yeah. or, or something. I'm pretty sure they were pancakes. And at the end of the show, her husband, Johnny, said, well, viewers, thank you very much for watching, and I hope all your pancakes turn out like Fanny's. And I <laughs> was rolling. And my mum hadn't got a clue what I was laughing at. So I hope all your pancakes turn out like Fanny's. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's, it's going to depend on the, the oil, really. If, if you've got it too hot, it's going to go a bit frilly around the edges. <laughs> Boys! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, we're, a bit, we're a bit in the room shark today, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, in uh, in the USA, Fanny is your your buttocks, right? It's your bum. But in the in the in the UK, it has a uh, 
the opposite meaning. But yeah, I just I, I, I'll never forget that. I, I was a kid. I don't even think I was ten years old, and I was absolutely rolling. And my mum was looking at me like I'm some crazy dude. What, 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 what's funny? What are you laughing about? She just didn't get it. Well, the, it, it, it's, um, there's a sort of a change of language. A, a fanny pack in the States is a bum bag in the UK. Yeah. It's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. It's, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, need, need to sort out and um, get things in perspective here. So, Nigel, you're behind the Great Firewall of China, and Karen, you're on the top of the hill. And uh, the sun sun rises in the east and sets in the final location. But let's just hope it's not caliph fornication. This is true. <laughs> this is absolutely true. Well, like I pointed out on the but, video, I mean, what price is stardom? Because you can have a nice, you can you can be on the boulevard and everybody is going to walk all over you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's basically what it's showing. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the latest one. I think UAP channel was right with his testing and things. It's, I mean, it's a familiar story. It's going to be predetermined and it will be what's in the solution. So here we go again, the final solution. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but don't worry about it. It's all just theatre shows. I um I sent Karen an email today with a screenshot and a link. I sent her the screenshot just in case the um they decide to take the link down. Maybe she can put it up in the um in this uh, in this podcast. And um it was some it was the one of the ex um vice presidents or president from Pfizer basically saying that the um the virus is over and there's no need for a action jackson if you get my drift the action jackson um and it's right there and it, and it was published in india in some uh, some newspaper in india now uh, whether or not it's just been put out there to um you know to confuse or what it's been put out there just to um because that's what this world well, does who knows but order out of chaos so you need to create chaos before you can have order mm -hmm. Well, I was listening to um, to Matt earlier from Quantum of Conscience. I do like Matt. Uh, yeah. He um, he basically said that the system, what what he calls the not milk, he calls it the not milk, yeah. Clinton backwards. Um, and to actually quote, uh, I wrote it down. To actually quote Matt, he says the system wants us to forget, or abandon, or never know who we are and when he said that it just punched me straight between the eyes and i thought dude you are so spot on he is i was, I was, I was yeah. listening to his most recent one um yesterday and um yeah he's 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 pretty much got it oh i think he's totally got it you know he says the, yeah. the, the biblical satan can 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 kind of give you a pen but he can't put his hand over your hand and actually force you or move the pen in order to sign your own signature you've got to give consent you've got to do it yourself and well, uh, spot on. I, know, I, know, I know where i know where this thing some people call it satan some call it lucifer some call it the devil or i know exactly where it is yeah me too um it's it's very easy everybody's got one um the first act of war is defense. So if someone says to you, I don't like your video, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then something will come up in you to defend it. Now, if they've got your goat, <laughs> there it is. Yep. It's all about getting your goat. So if, if, you, if, 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 you, if you've not got it under control, then somebody else, you've allowed somebody else to take control of it. <laughs> That's all it is. It's um, it's uh, it's very cleverly worked out. Um, it's all about making impressions. So I mean, you, you don't stand a chance with any of this because it's already started before you're here. Um, I mean, all you got to do is cast your mind back. Did you did you learn that? the 12 times table in five minutes or was it from repetition 
Repetition. We'll have you some repetition. Yeah, yeah everything. So, same as learning to drive. When you first start driving, you, you, you're conscious of, I've got to check the parking brakes on, adjust my seat, put the seat belt on, um, get, check my mirrors and everything. And then after a while, it just becomes second nature. Um, so basically, this is what meditation is. It's reprogramming because some of these these are system programmed things so the body is controlled because the body you think I want a chocolate bar or I want another coffee and and when, when the conscious mind is in control of it you can say to the body no you bloody sit down until I tell you we're gonna move um, a lot of it a lot of things are done from, from programming and this is why well a lie if it's told enough told often enough it's impressed on headstones, it's engraved. That's why it's carved into the stone. It's all to make impressions on us because what happens is the body starts doing biological changes. Now this is the scary bit because um, it's like, ooh, they are making me sick just from hearing what they're saying because mm. they're making me feel fear. Well, <laughs> I, I you say, are, you, sorry. I was going to say, you, you, you mentioned learning to drive a car. I mean, they say there's essentially three stages of learning. And um, learning to drive a car is probably a really good analogy because when you get into the driver's seat for the very first time, you are consciously incompetent. You know that you can't drive the car. Yeah. So you're consciously incompetent when it comes to driving the car. Um, then once you you've had a few driving lessons um, you become uh, consciously competent in other words now you know that you know how to drive the car but you still got to think about yeah. it and you know yeah and then once you pass your test and you've got a few hours on the road then you become unconsciously competent which no, means you just get a red L yeah you just get in the car and drive I mean I um, I used to work in Stoke-on-Trent, I used to live in Derby, I used to work in Stoke-on-Trent. It was like an hour's drive to work and an hour's drive home. And the amount of times that I'd pull up at a set of traffic lights and think, oh God, I don't remember going around that roundabout or I don't remember going past that T-junction or whatever, because it just becomes second nature. Yeah. So you become unconsciously competent. And then essentially they're, they're the three stages of, um, or what are known as the three stages of learning. And but we fooled in the same way. Um, you know, we look at what's going on now. I mean, I, I saw some stupid woman earlier um, on um, on a YouTube video who's she was wearing a mask and she was standing on like something like Speaker's Corner. I'm not sure where it was, but something similar. And she, she was going, "Oh, trust the scientist and trust this." And you've got to, you know. And I'm like, "You are just off the charts, insane! You've done no research. You have not got any idea what you're talking about." And she was just essentially spruiking the um, the mainstream narrative to anybody that would listen to her, um, and it's just you know it, it's the same. It's they use the three stages of learning in order to brainwash, for, for want of a better word, because they know how it works. There's um, three things people are obsessed with, and that is people, places, and time. And yep. they run the, that's the programming of the system to yep. keep those three things. But ideally, what you want to do is going from being a somebody to being a no one, a nobody, and in no time. And then from that stage, go to an everybody and everywhere and in every time. Mm. But um, but, I mean, we're spiritual, but like if you're sick in bed, you can get bed sores. So spiritually you can also get wind sores yeah, yeah. Um, you'll find them in palaces normally in places like Sandringham mm -hmm. but uh, I, actually I was thinking that I thought of this earlier a hobo coat um, you've got sex covert goat so you could have sex covert dot huh. <laughs> hmm. got a TC we got to teach the AI some new words, you see. Um, well, yeah, but you know, like your, 
Um, one of your fortes, um, from my perspective, is the way that you look at language, um, the way that you break down language. And I, I do the same thing here in China because there's so many words that you have a meaning, the meaning of a word, and you actually have the translation of a word. And one that springs to mind is mobile phone, shouji. Well, that's two words in Chinese, shou, which means hand, and ji, which means machine. So even though you say, well, what is this called? And I say shouji, right, which is a mobile phone. But when you actually translate the word into English, it actually means hand machine, which has got nothing to do with a, with a, with a phone. Um, so everything, as you well know, is hidden in language. And we know that everything is uh, in this realm is commercial. Um, and, and, and the words that we use are just... It just becomes second nature, and we don't think. You know, Karen, I don't like the company you keep. Uh, mind your own business. You know, everything is to do or related to um, business, commerce, um, which is where we get the Admiralty law from and so on and so forth. But, you know, even just everyday language. You know, I don't like the company he keeps or, you know, as I say, you know, mind your own business. I mean, business, company, it's all, it's all there right in front of us. And for the most part, we don't notice. Yeah, I mean, it's all the good, the bad and ugly. So which one would you pick out of Texas, Aztec and Tech? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know which one I'd go for. Which one? Texas. E.T. It's as E.T. when you see the cross that's been done on us. Mm, okay. Okay. I mean, okay. Uh, I understand that Elvis Presley came from Memphis. Well, it's funny there's one in Egypt as well, because the new world is actually the old world. Well, Elvis is an anagram of evils. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have the L with the E L, which um, is essentially "quote unquote" God, Elohim. Yeah. Which is why we have, you know, Michael, uh, the the angel, the archangel. Mm. Um, so you've got the L, which um, biblically and born in Hebrew is 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 God. Um, did you know? This is this is interesting that Elvis took a polio vaccine live on stage on Bill Gates' first birthday. Now, that's <laughs> something you can't make up. That's something you can't make up. And apparently at the time, there was something like, oh, I forget what it was, but it was less than 1% of parents were um, actually allowing their kids to go and have the polio vaccine. But after Elvis did it on stage, it went up to like 80% of parents, or women essentially, were, um, were getting their, uh, their kids to have the, uh, the polio vax. But it's just interesting that um, it actually took place in 1958, I think it was, and it was actually on Bill Gates' first birthday. So if people out there think that, you know, this stuff hasn't been planned for decades, then they really need to, um, you know, have a look at themselves because this is just a script. And as you said, James, we, we, we were born into it. We're, it's like it's like walking into a movie theatre yeah. during a three-hour movie. It's like walking in an hour and a half into the movie and, and, and trying to figure out what, to, what happened for the first part. Um, um, well, I've been in the dressing room quite a lot of the time and I had to read through the script and I don't like it. <laughs> well, that uh, thing, you, say, you say an Elvis. I, I, was, I was thinking, uh huh. Um, but then, I was, then what came into my mind as you're talking about him? That song called "In a Trap." It's like yeah. the price of stardom again. But you, it's interesting yeah. you say about the vaccine. When did he start to put the weight on? I don't think that was real, but I can't remember. It was probably a year or so before he quote unquote died. In seventy seven, yeah, died. But the other, um, the other interesting connection is that um, he he was known as the king. Yeah. Um, and 
Um, he did a show from the uh, the Space Needle in Seattle, which is happens to be in King County, um, and that's where um, Mr. Gates lives. Was born and raised. Is in Seattle, where there's the Space Needle. Nothing to see here, guys. Please move along. <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't really like Bill Gates. You'd think with all those billions, he could get something better than all those jumpers from, I don't know, it must be Primark or for the, I suppose it would be something like Walmart's in the States, the equivalent. Um, well, yeah. I mean, they're, and, uh, they're, 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 ru they're rubbish. Is <laughs> Wear something decent. Well, his, his, husband's, his husband's even worse. The stuff that she, uh, she ate, that creature wears. Yeah, crazy. Straight out of the charity shop, for the looks of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dragged up and dragged. But it, it, it's it's just amazing how um, you know all these things. You, you you can join all these dots together, and it just it, it, it's amazing that you can actually see the scripts. You know, you, you can see that everything is scripted. Everything has been scripted for decades and decades and decades. It's absolutely amazing once you can see through the veil. It's crazy. I wonder, actually, you say about Elvis the King. Well, above a king is an ace, especially if you're playing trumps. Make you wonder. Well, yeah. that's I think, true. Karen, you show the morphing face of the two between um, Elvis and... Yeah, quite regularly I see them when I'm looking at the footage. When I don't look at the footage, I don't see it. But, yeah, I did one yesterday. And you're supposed to go to church. You didn't go to church. He wasn't there. <laughs> There's a pretty good video on YouTube, Karen, that you might like. I haven't looked at it, but I, I, I somebody showed it me on the. I was watching a, a video, and this guy highlighted it, and it's called um, "Elvis Glitches Out." Apparently, it's on YouTube. Um, yeah, I think you'd like that. His eyes go weird. His eyes roll back in his head. His hand goes goes really really strange um kind of right. so strange well i just thought when i watched it i thought wow that's right up karen street i must um oh, i must tell you about it and i forgot but uh, yeah always oh, glitching yeah weird thanks for that nigel no you're welcome i'm, I'm just sorry i forgot I, I i meant to find the link and send it to you but i uh I think I went to work and came back and forgot. Um, but yeah, there's just there's just so many connections. Once you start seeing some of these connections and you start joining them all together, then you just realise that we're actually wasting so much time going down these rabbit holes and looking for this and trying to find that. Because at the end of the day, it's just all one big script. But what I was going to say before um, we came on air was look at the Buffalo um, uh, World's Fair from 1901 when President McKinley was assassinated. Um, but if you look at the images of this um, beautiful, absolutely stunning, and apparently it was built on a marsh. How on earth this thing was built on a marsh? It's just stunning. The Tartarian architecture is absolutely beautiful. And President McKinley was shot in a in, called the Temple of Music. And this temple, this domed temple, is absolutely off the charts. And if you look at the organ inside, Karen and I were talking about this on our last podcast, where I was showing a uh, PPT with some of these beautiful, huge organs in some of these quote-unquote cathedrals and churches. But this one in the Temple of, uh, of Music, apparently it's the biggest organ that was ever, ever built. Um, which again, you know, in, in my opinion, just gives rise to the fact that these cathedrals and churches were, were healing centers. It's all based on frequency. There's a huge statue there, it looks like Caesar. I'm not sure who it is, it looks like Caesar, and it's gold. Some people have speculated that it's uh, gold plated. Other people have said it's actually solid gold. And it's just, it's amazing, it's stunning. But the, the crazy thing about this particular World's Fair is that it's full of rituals. 
they tried to electrocute an elephant. They brought these um, native Indians in as some kind of sideshow. And then they brought a load of dogs and 750 dogs. And the native Indians had to kill these dogs and eat them. And it's all, it's, the whole thing was built on a, um, uh, a ritual. It's absolutely horrible. But um, the point I'm trying to get at is that when you look at some of these um, so-called world's fairs, these expositions, and when they actually took place, it's like a bridge between what you might call our civilization and the previous civilization. These expos where they highlighted and showcased all the technology from the previous civilization, and then, of course, they destroyed all these, uh, like the Crystal Palace in London was, was one, and that was a huge building. Um, and they all, they all kind of caught fire around the same time. I mean, it was such a shame. All these buildings all around the world, they all caught fire because Crystal Palace was made of glass, and uh, glass catches fire so easily, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, all, it's almost like a bridge between our civilization and the, uh, what we know as the Tartarian civilization. But the, the Buffalo Expo is a little bit different to all the others because this one is just full of ritual sacrifice, even the assassination of President McKinley that most people have never even heard of. This when, you talk about, when you talk about US presidential assassination, apparently McKinley was number three. He was the third yeah. president. The 20, 25th one as well. I can't remember his That's name. That's right. He, he, was, uh, he was number 25, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, go on. Because I think Matt on Quantum of Conscience mentioned the other the, the two names. Because, yeah, he said there's four as well. But, of course, it's strange. You never hear about the other two. Well, he'd, he'd, pick, up on, he'd pick up on that because that's his family name. Um, but, um, yeah, so that actually means that JFK, if he really was assassinated, was actually the fifth president to be um, assassinated, not the second. Hmm. Um but this, uh, this, this buffalo is, I think that's a rabbit hole that I'm going to have to go down a, a little bit further and maybe I'll, I'll throw some stuff to Karen and maybe we can do a podcast on it once I've got um, my PPT and that's finished. But as I say, the architecture, the Tartarian architecture, which is no longer there, is just insane. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. And of course, you know, this actually happened in 1901, which just has two ones and a nine in it, but nothing to see there. Um, so, yeah, I was actually quite um, quite impressed with what this guy said on, it was on uh, Crow Triple Seven today. Um, I listened to it and then I started diving into what this guy was talking about and it just blew me away. I think it, you just got to look at the names they give these things. <laughs> I mean, World's Fair. I mean, but who's paying the fare? And I think what you're looking at mm -hmm. is the spoils of a trophy hunter saying, look, look what I've kept, look what I've taken, look what I've stolen. Um, and it's displayed for everyone to see before it's all squirreled away and never to be seen again. It's sort of a bit like a Smithsonian policy on everything as well. It just well, stinks. All's fair in love and war, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but exposition. I mean, wh what's being yeah. exposed? Yeah, yeah. No, no inhibitions. An exhibition. Mm. Um, it, they, they're just rubbing our faces in it the whole time. I mean, com comedy has come die. I mean, a lot of it is laughing at other people's misfortunes or being stupid and things. And when you look at it again with fresh eyes, you think actually that's not even funny. It's it's sick humour. Like we're laughing at each other all the time. No, you're right, and it's. Uh... I was talking to uh, Nigel about this before we came online about big egos and that those people find those things funny, but I don't. Um, yeah, yeah, you were. Um, it's like I, I I said to Karen. I made a I think I made a comment on your channel as well, James. That life is an f in lie. Is an f in lie. Oh yeah, this is um, this is the realm of death. There is nothing in this realm 
that does not decay with time. It's all mm. subject. But... And it's all fake. It's all fake. I mean, you know, it's like once you realise, um, you know, for people listening to this, if you've not watched the podcast that Karen and I did called uh, The Great Mortgage Fraud, you really need to go back and watch it. Because once you realise that um, even what we consider to be money is all fake, and this is what people fight over, it's what people die die for, and um, it's what we go out and spend all our energy on trying to earn. I mean, you know, in, in, in my opinion, um, again, I, I, I said this to Karen, that um, cash, whatever, whatever you want to call it, currency, I mean, currency, it, it, it changes from country to country. It's whichever C you're at. We're all in admiralty law. So your currency is your current C, S-E-A, where you currently are. Um, but once you realize it's all fake, it's just a store. It's, it's a store of energy. You go out and you expend your energy, and then you get some cash, which stores that energy until you want to go and use that cash to pay somebody else for their energy or you want to go and buy something which has been created by somebody else's energy even if you go and buy a loaf of bread you know somebody somebody made that loaf of bread somebody baked that loaf of bread so cash to me is just a, an energy store it's like a battery um but once you realize that it's all fake it, it, it has no intrinsic value at all but uh, you then begin to realize that, you know, what else is fake? Well, everything. The only thing that's not fake is people, is us. Once you know who you are, then you understand who other people are. And a lot are. of those are fake as well. Well, it's like uh, when we did the soul and spirit thing, and you really hit the nail on the head um, when we were talking the other day, and you said they have a soul, but they don't have a spirit. I'm like, well... Yeah, that's it. These NPCs, um, you can't, you can't exist. You can't walk around. You can't eat. You can't wash. You can't go to the bathroom unless you have a soul. But that doesn't mean that you have the spark of divinity. That doesn't mean that you have the the spirit, because the spirit inhabits the soul. The soul inhabits the body. You can exist without spirit, but you can't exist without soul. This is why. Um, you know, when we were talking a few weeks ago, Karen, about soulmates and twin flames, we we kind of look upon the meaning as being the same thing, but they're not. And evidence of that is what I was just saying about the uh, the Chinese word for phone, shouji. You know, it, hand machine. So the translation is not the same as the meaning. So soul and spirit, um, we kind of think of them as being the same meaning, but in actuality, they're not. The, the body is the sole carrier of a spirit. Um, you go, going back to you saying about the houses, it just works like a monopoly board. You can have that hotel on Mayfair, but you, think you don't own the board. <laughs> and it tells you, in, I mean, you can look on the online rules of the game of Monopoly, Monopoly, one to many, but it's not to many, it's to few. Um, and it says when the banker, does not go broke. When when the bank runs out of money, the banker can write out promissory notes. They play the monopoly game the whole time. Yeah. With everybody. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you've got a monopoly game, and I've got a monopoly game, and Karen's got a monopoly game, and we all come to your house to play monopoly, and Karen brings her monopoly money from her game, and I bring my monopoly money from my game, we can all use the same Monopoly money while we're playing the game of Monopoly at your house. Because we've got three lots of currency that's all all usable in that um, in that realm of Monopoly while we're buying and selling houses and so on and so forth and hotels. So it's kind of the same thing. What we our currency is literally uh, for want of a better term it's literally monopoly money because it has no intrinsic value it's just at all it's it's a it's an iou it's a promissory note a promise sorry note well i i, I interpret as promissories 
um, fitting yeah. in with the dictionaries and secret areas, secretaries, mercenaries, and militaries. But um, yeah, um, technically that's illegal in a way because you're not using legal money and you're buying something. So, uh, but obviously they, that's a good, that would be a very difficult one to enforce. But well, um, when you think, yeah. when every time you change country. Every time you buy something, you're getting change. Everything's all about change to create chaos. Mm. So you change money, you get change back, and you get shortchanged. And then when you go to another country, you exchange. Yeah, pass the port, passport, and exchange. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see, it's like um, I live in China, so I earn Chinese yuan. And I can spend that anywhere inside the monopoly board, which would be the um, the Chinese border. So inside the country. But if I go to Australia or the UK or America, then I that money or that currency is useless. I have to exchange it for British pounds or Aussie dollars or American dollars or or, or whatever whatever country that I'm uh, what I'm in my current sea. Um, so it's all it's all a fallacy. It's all it's all plastic. It's all fake. Um, everything in this realm is based on commerce. It's this this whole world is just one big business, and it's all fake because we're all running around trying to earn quote unquote money. Um, because that's our god, or for most people, money is god. Um. In order to give ourselves a better existence, you know, so we can have the bigger house and the nicer car, and you know, and so on and so forth. Um, but in reality, it's it, it's all fake. It's it, it, nothing is tangible. Nothing is actually real. The only thing that's real are people, and and as Karen just pointed out, even some of them are not, because they don't have the spark. They have the soul. The soul animates the body. The spirit uh, is connected to the soul. So that's what makes you who you are. If you have a spirit, that's what makes you who you are. That that makes you the nice guy or the, the person that doesn't want to hurt, hurt anyone or harm anyone and so on and so forth. Without the spirit, you don't have the um, what I call the spark of divinity, which Karen kind of blew me away a couple of weeks ago. When she said, "Look at your palm. Look at the palms of your hands. Can you see an M?" I went, "Yeah, I can see an M." And she said, "Well, that's that represents your spark of divinity. And not everybody has the M on the palm of their hand." And that floored me. Totally floored me. I did some research on it. I looked it all all up on the internet, and yeah, it's all there. It's crazy. But again, as I pointed out to Karen, an M looks like a three on its side so if you've got an M on the palm of both your hands or both palms as I have you just got to turn your palms uh, a little bit skew and you can actually see a 33 is that relevant to the Masonic 33 possibly have they inverted the meaning yes um, but you know it's all it's all there it's all right in front of your face you've got a repeat theme with everything that happens um, based on the everything is a reverse or a lie or a mirror image and it's the same tactics over and over again there's no creativity to it because they don't have imagination so 33 666 whatever the all-seeing eye everything that you think of is bad there is an equal and opposite um, as even Einstein is sort of dropping a hint with that, an equal and an opposite. So, I mean, it, most people, if you say to them about shape shifting, they're going to straight away think reptilians, think evil, and they're not going to think, well, hang on, there might be a, a good, like angels or something, a good version. Yeah, I mean, you get two types of angels. Everything, everything is a duality in this realm. It's, it's seeing the mirror as well as the reflection. Mm. Uh, and well, I, but, yeah. It, it's all it's all, it's all about system programming. So most people they wake up in the morning, and then they I need to have a shower. 
I need to have a coffee, I've got to get to work, I've got to make breakfast, blah, blah, blah. And it's just repeat programming. Mm. So they're not I mean, it's keeping everybody busy. So, I mean, meditating is, is what it's all about. And med, all meditating is, um, it's, it's like saying ascension, kundalini. It's, it's the same thing, different words for the same thing. But all meditation is, is reprogramming from the mind and get, getting rid of these system programs in the yeah. body because yeah. it creates chemical changes which are adverse to our health because they adverse with adverts to entrance us in shops to buy things and then we get change. Mm. <laughs> or it's all on credit now. <laughs> Everywhere seems yeah. to be Do you know what it is? It's all one big setup, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, but the future is not set. Yeah, you cannot be serious. I um, I go back to what I said that um, Matt was saying earlier about it. What the system wants us to forget, abandon, or never know who we actually are. Which means, in my opinion, that if 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 the system is going to put that much effort into trying to stop us from knowing who we are, or forgetting who we are, or abandoning who we are, then to me that that kind of gives it away a little bit and makes me think that we're possibly a lot more powerful than the system will actually allow us to um to think or to believe but um going back to the 666 i mean in asia just generally in asia 666 is considered lucky you know a few months ago i got a text message on my way to work and it was just a promo it was just like a, a, a promotion you get them all the time it's a nuisance they pop up on the internet. You get these ads that pop up on the internet all the time as well. And it was um, essentially, if you want to take up this offer, just text 666 back as your reply. And hmm. I got a friend in Cambodia. You know, you walk down the streets in Cambodia and you've got all these bill posts, posters everywhere with, you know, text 666 to this number to claim your free prize. So... As I said in an earlier podcast with Karen, everything over here is the polar opposite. Everything is the polar opposite to um, yeah. to what it is in the West. And then um, most of it is, 90% of it or 95% of it is nothing like what actually taught it is in the West. You know, I mean, you've got to remember that communism comes from the word commune. Well, what's a commune? It's a community. It's the root word in community. You know, so we're taught that uh, communism is so bad, uh, Russia's so bad, and China's so bad. It's all BS, all of it. Absolute nonsense. I mean, you know, in another it's couple propaganda. of weeks. propaganda. It's propaganda. Okay. Yeah, of course it's it is. It's propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. But if everything was so terrible, and everything was what we're taught it is, they wouldn't need propaganda, would they? would just be normal it would just be natural so the um the propaganda machine is just there to to lie to us about everything it's um well do you do you want to know who you are i know who i am but i think a lot of people don't i think a lot of people are scared you just, you just said it as well <laughs> mm. I think a lot of people are scared. I mean, you have that. I am. Um, yeah, I am. You have that. It's, um, is it? You know, when we were kids years ago, you, you, you would hear these silly phrases like, um, oh, this guy's gone off to find himself. You think, oh, what a dickhead. Or you know, what, what's that all about? Or some guy's become a recluse. He's gone to live in the woods in a little wooden cabin in the woods because he wants to be alone and he wants to quote unquote find himself and until you actually experience that and you go through the what i call the dark night of the soul and you realize that everything in this realm is fake it's all deception then you kind of have no choice you are kind of pushed into a corner and you go well okay if all that is fake if everything i believe to be real turns out to be fake where do I go from here? I've got nowhere to go. You haven't got anywhere to go, but inside yourself. And that's where you find all the answers. And I know that sounds corny. I know there's going to be people out there going, oh, what's he on about? 
but you really are pushed into a corner once you realize everything that you're seeing, everything in front of you is a lie, it's fake, it's plastic, it's a deception. Where can you go? There is nowhere to go outside of yourself. There is nowhere to go because everything outside of yourself is fake. So you have no choice other than to go inside yourself and quote unquote find yourself, which is the um, the old phrase that we used to laugh at 30, 40 years ago. And, and once you do that, and that is what the system does not want us to do. That's the last thing the system wants us to do is to find ourselves because once we find ourselves, and I don't like to use that phrase, but um, once, once you do that, you, you begin to understand who you are, not what you are. What you are is your name. What you are is what looks back at you from the mirror in the morning. Um, you need to understand who you are. And once you understand who you are, then it is so easy to understand who other people are and then begin to make connections with other people on a much deeper level because they know who they are as well. Uh, and it's just, it's mind blowing. It's absolutely crazy. And people go, oh, it's new age. No, it's not. It's nothing to do with new age. It's purely and simply what we are here to do. We came to this realm because we agreed to come to this realm. And if 40% of our soul, um, as I have been told by many, many reliable sources, if 40% of our soul remains on the soul plane and only 60% of our soul incarnates into this flesh and blood meat suit, do you think that our, the other 40% is going to actually let us screw up? No, of course not. It's not going to let us make huge mistakes. It might allow us to make certain mistakes that we can learn from, but it's not going to put us in a position that we're, we're, we're damned to hell or we're going to go into the abyss or the lake of fire or any of that biblical nonsense. So it's, it's a lot deeper than um, most people even can begin to understand. It's um, it's often spoken about outer space. So what about inner space? That's where it that's where it's all going on. Exactly. Uh, and it does come down to well, I don't like the way this world is, so I object to it, and that is that is exactly what you want to do. Um, Neo was. was told this in the matrix i'm sure his last name's cortex neo cortex <laughs> um, don't try and bend the spoon it's impossible bend yeah we create from imagination subjective thoughts become reality that's the real magic the m so if you that's the good magic if you turn the m upside down you've got a w notice how many silent w's like hole and world that's telling you with a, when the W's at the silent W's at the front, it's it's a big clue with the with the words in that. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree totally. Um, but you talk about inner space, and um, that's exactly what I'm. I'm. It's so it's so simple to. Um, understand but it's not easy and, and, and we, we kind of look at the word simple and the word easy as being um, synonyms for each other and, and they're not simple is simple and easy is easy but it's so simple to understand but at the same time it's not easy to understand because it's not easy to explain um, and then of course you have this um, situation which is also projected on us it's also part of the um, the programming that um, once you decide that that's what you want to do, you want to go inside and you want to find yourself and you want to understand who you are. Well, now you're being selfish. Now you don't care about other people. Well, actually, it's, it's, it's easier to care about other people once you understand who you are, because then you understand who they are. And I've got to the point in my life now, and I've said this to Karen many, many times that, you know, I only care about people who care about me. Now, that's on the face of it, that sounds selfish. 
But if you don't care about me, well, why should I care about you? Which I think is a perfectly pertinent question to ask. And yet, when I say it the other way around, when I say I only care about people who care about me, oh, that's selfish. Okay. But if you don't care about me, why should I care about you? Uh, yeah, you've got a point. So you, you, you have two sides to the same coin with two completely different um, interpretations, to want of a better word. But as I say, it's so difficult to explain, but so easy and so simple to understand once you understand it. A lot of it is uh, um, the ego mind will come up to defend its position with a lot of this. Um, but it, it, the way to look at it is, right, well, that person wants to talk to me, but then they haven't got time to listen to what you've got to say. Then you, then you flip that over. It's like, how would that feel? I've given them like half an hour of my time and they don't want to hear what I've got to say. And and, and it's, it's that sort of thing. It's We're encouraged in this system to take everything personally, but yeah, we're actually yeah. personifications of the creator. We are co-creators. In the, sort of the Bible, um, the human body is the cross. The creator forgets who, who it is at, at that point to have the experience of being a man or a, a generic man. It, it's like a child um, will play with a doll's house or something, and in their mind, they're in that doll. They've become that doll. They're experiencing it. Um, as a young child, you, you, you're oblivious to the cold weather, but there's a parent going, come in and put your coat on. You're going to get a cold. And there's the programming. You only get yeah, cold yeah. because, you, because you, you're told you're going to get cold and it, beco it becomes accepted. The chemical changes now fill the cold air. You didn't feel it until you were told about it. Not, it's the yeah, knowledge yeah. of good and evil. <laughs> a bit of knowledge can be a bad thing, being shown to us. But it, it is until you, it, it works like a magnet. How can you go out there and help anybody unless you've, you've sorted out the internal conflicts? Because your deeds and words have got to match the seed, the seed and the, the fruit of the you can You can tell the seed by the fruit it produces. Hmm. Well, this is why there's so many people that talk the talk but don't walk the walk. If you can't walk the walk, then don't talk the talk, in my opinion. But you, um, you mentioned imagination. And um, when you look at the biblical side of, you know, the Holy Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, um, you have the Father, which is imagination. You have um, the, the Mother which is the thought, and then you have the sun, which is the, the actual creation, because, you know, you, firstly, you've got imagination, so you, your imagination gives you something which creates a thought, and then you think, well, yeah, I'm going to go and do that, I'm going to go and write that, or, you know, in, in, in Karen's case, I'm going to go and make that video, so, and this is represented in numerology by the zero, the one, and the two. The zero being the portal, the zero being the sun, the zero being the imagination. Uh, then you have the one, which is the thought, the single thought. And then you have the two, which is uh, represents creation. I mean, you know, you, you need two people to create a, 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 a baby, for argument's sake. I mean, you don't need two people to write a book, and you don't need two people to make a make a video, but when you look at the actual creation in its um, literal sense, which is to create another human being or to create another life, you need you need two. You need the male and the female. So that's represented by the by the two. So you have the zero, the one, and the two: imagination, thought, creation. And then you get into the three, which goes starts off with um, Tesla, if he existed. The, the three, six, and nine, which again is just multiples of three. But you can't get to three unless you go past the one and the two, or the zero, one, and the two, which represents imagination, thought, and creation. Yeah, definitely. Um, basically, no one knows the, 
the appointed time accepts the father. Um, these vessels are the bride of the creator. That's another aspect. Mm -hmm. the, the, the weird thing about it is the, the, the bit that counts with, with, with our spirit is the spine, the 33 vertebrae, which is the Jacob's ladder and the brain. So it resembles a sperm and it's also mm -hmm. a seed. Um, and within we've got to send that consciousness from the place of the sun, the solar plexus, up into the heavens, which is sort of behind the third eye. It's in the skull. Um, well, that's why we that's have the that's, 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 why the creator, that's, that's why the creator is um, in Golgotha. It means skull. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to interject, but that's why we have two temples, you know, either side of that forehead you have the pineal gland in the middle which is the uh, the third eye and i think i said before that we're born with three eyes two with which to look and one with which to see and then either side of the pineal gland you have the the, uh, the temples which is where quote unquote god resides so you know it's all it's all there it's all there right in front of us but we just we're taught not to look there it's like you were saying earlier about the 12 times table i mean I work in a Chinese school, and it's all rote, what we call rote learning, R-O-T-E. And that just means listen and repeat. It's just, they're not learning anything. They're just listening and they're repeating, and it's listening and repeating. And it just goes into their brain the same way that any times table, well, when we were kids, you know, your two times table, your three times table, your 10 times table, your 12 times table, whatever. They were just taught to us. And we can even go back there now and we go, oh, what, 12, 8, uh, 1, 12, 12, 10, 12, 24, 36, 48, right? And, and we, can, we can just spill out the answer because we m literally memorized it. Yeah, um, interesting. It goes up to 12 as well. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, it's where uh, it's all, it's all going on with it within us so you've also got the, you've got the the birth below in water and then you have the birth from above um, mm -hmm. when when you see your son which will appear in your mind and he calls you father that's when you know who, who you are which is i am yes the the perceived evil is is just the creator playing a part. They do the Clintons and things. They're all playing a part. Um, what's actually been shown is is a very twisted mirror thing. Lockdown is about going within. Yep. It, it, because it, it, as Santa Spinacci would say, all is an atom. All is a tomb, and it is a tomb because yep. this is the world of death. The, the yep. prison bars are the rib cage, but we we want to come out of that that tomb. Mm. We want to atone. We want to tune. We want to attune in, attune ourselves. But it's also I also find it um, encouraging that the word spirit is pretty much um, in the middle of the word inspiration. Where does inspiration come from? Why are we inspired to do something? And people go, oh, yeah, but the T's not in there. Well, no, yes, it is, but it's not. Inspiri inspiration. The word spirit is almost there. Um, so, yeah, ev everything comes from within. So if everything comes from within, why not go within to discover what is within? which is who we are. We've also got spire, yes. aspire, aspire. aspire. Um, yeah. you, you, you're going upwards um, with the spires to get the atmospheric electricity, but um, there's a spark of inspiration, I suppose, is the way to... to well, yeah, but I mean, you, you aspire to do something. I mean, it's your goal. It's something that you want to achieve. You're aspiration rather than your inspiration you aspire to do something karen's very quiet what do you think babe oh i'm just listening to you two boys talk well i'm just I thinking you're, you're very cool right aren't you 
Um, I'm just trying to get a point across that is, it's so simple, yet it's not easy. But once you've got it, once you get it, you go, oh, my God, that is so easy. There is a, a quote, I forget who said it, but he said, life is not easy, uh, life is not difficult, but we make it difficult. And I totally agree. I think we do. I think we make it too difficult sometimes. Yeah, most people do most of the time. So what are your thoughts, babe? What do you think? Now you've listened to what me and James well, have been dreaming on about. I think one of the biggest things I always say is that you get to know who you are as a person. Without knowing who you are, you're never going to know anything else. It's so knowing yourself better, more and more comes to you then, and then you've got more and more to give out. If you don't know who you are, you never give anything out. Everything's for you. When you when you care more about other people, then it's because you know who you are. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying earlier. That you you once you know who you are, then it's so much easier to get to know who other people are and look beyond that facade and look beyond that um, that you know in, in from a male's point of view, from you know the the lipstick and the eyeshadow because that's not what that's not who a person is. That's what that person is. Um, and it's so difficult for people to understand that um, in order to know who uh, another person is, you must first learn to understand who you are. That's why, you know, again, it's wrapped up. I'm not religious whatsoever, but that's why it's wrapped up in the, um, in the Bible about, um, you know, love others as you love yourself. And then, of course, people, well, that's selfish. What do you mean, love yourself? Well, once you understand who you are, once you begin to love yourself, then it's so much easier to love other people. You know, this has got nothing to do with sex. It's got nothing to do with gender. It's just who that other person is. And once you understand who you are, it's so much easier to understand who other people are. And then you can make a decision whether or not you want to love that person or have nothing to do with that person. It's all connected. We are all connected. Well, those who have who have the spark of divinity are connected. The NPCs, the uh, the Adam and Eve, one hundred percent Adam and Eve um, descendants, they don't have the spark. They're not, uh, I suppose, spiritually evolved enough in this experience, and they've got many more to go through. What I was going to say was. You're saying about the word easy. I mean, it, it is a practical sort of demonstration of it. If you're sort of sitting there, go, go into silence, into a dark room, and uh, just sit there and count back from 100 down to 1. Mm -hmm. See how far you get before the mind starts wandering and thoughts come in. That's oh, what you yeah. observe. I mean, it does sound easy, but it, it, it's all about practice, practice, practice. I mean, Again, the dark side tells you that you go to a doctor, it's a general practitioner. Yeah. Um, but if you want to play a concert grand and you want to play all the complete works of Mozart or something, well, you've just got to practice. And it's this is doing this is what they're doing the internal work is. It's not looking at the external because to put it into context, all being atom. That's 99.999% is no thing. So we're actually focusing on the 0.0001%. I wonder where that term is also used, the 1% the of the 1%, as it were. But so the, the, the things that we're focusing on are so minuscule in the bigger picture because we've got the eyes of the deceiver. There is no Satan or devil or whatever. It, it's our, it's our twin caduceus. One's telling you to do one thing. One's trying to get you to do something else. You've, it's creating harmony between the divine feminine, which is the ever loving wife, which will give you whatever the conscious mind is feeling. So if you're feeling fear, it's going to say, oh, fear, you want more fear. It doesn't know good or bad. It will just give you what you feel. So we, we create the world around us by our thoughts, quite literally. Um, I deliberately made a video the other day and somebody said to me, it, it sounds like you're going to kill your mother. I said, I said, you've, you've not listened to it. I said, it's thought creates reality. If I 
want to be sort of free, well, yeah, I could murder her and then go in prison, end up in solitary confinement. I've got exactly what I wanted, but not exactly the way I wanted it. And I, and, and I didn't make that decision. Well, I did make, I made a bad decision, but I've got that, I've got the isolation from my choice this way. So I can do this meditation every day and keep practicing it and practicing it until it becomes imprinted into the body, into the cells. In, so the, I create the right chemical changes I, I transmute memories because it's wisdom is is knowledge and experience. I've had the experience of the excitement of something I've really wanted as a child that 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 feeling just as you're going to open that box to uh, that, that Christmas present you really wanted. And if you can transmute that feeling and hold that feeling inside and then you'll create these chemical changes and you'll feel better about everything. That, that that's the best thing it's it, it's practically doing it it's setting us setting aside some time for yourself and saying right i'm going into the silence and i'm going to watch my thoughts and see what comes up and what's triggering me digging down and thinking ah because it's a it's a slippery snake you've got to be wise as a serpent as christ says in in, in the bible um mm -hmm. you, you move like a wave you, you look both sides, you, you, you're aware all the time, aware of your own thoughts, aware of what you're saying and are my actions matching what I've just said? Have I said it in the right way? All, all these things, it all comes into it. It sounds easy, but it's not easy. I, I don't get it right. It's, yeah, as, as wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. And it's interesting that you... Um, you mentioned meditation. Now, you know, when you mention the word meditation, for a lot of people, it conjures up this, you know, sitting with your back straight, with your legs crossed, and you know, your your hands on your on your knees. And um, I I do a lot of meditating, and I don't do it that way at all. I'm not saying I'm right. I've never actually tried it that way. Um, I don't think I'd feel comfortable, um, but I think in order to um, to begin meditating, all you need to do is just go and lock yourself in a quiet room, you know, just go to your bedroom, turn everything off and just lay on the bed and close your eyes and just relax in total silence. Um, and things start to happen. Things start to eventuate. Um, you get these um, these calming, you get these thoughts, you get these, you end up going to places that you've never been, been to before. When I say places, I mean, you know, metaphorically. And um, so I don't believe that you actually have to sit there in that classical meditative position in order to um, do what you actually need to do, which is, for want of a better word, is the, uh, the inner work. I mean, and we've all done it, you know, the, the three of us here, we've all done it. You've done it, Karen's done it, I've done it. Um, but I'm, I bet my bottom dollar that none of us have actually sat there on the floor with our legs crossed, back up straight, with our, um, the back of our palms resting on our knees. I don't think that's necessary. You just need to be quiet. You need to get away from the TV, get away from the family, get away from the noise and just have peace, total silence, just for an hour. And if you can, if people can do that for just one hour a day, you know, even if they can't do it every day, three or four times a week, um, it works. It works, and the, um, the, the changes that you will experience are just crazy. They're just off the charts. Definitely. I would also, well... There's, there's no right or wrong wrong way. The, the danger with laying down on a bed is you, you can go into the programmed sleep mode. But really, it's like just be com sit somewhere where you're comfortable or, or whatever position you want to be in. Because if, you, if you're not comfortable, your body's going to keep sending signals and you're not going to be able to focus up because your body's sending signals saying, I'm not comfortable here. What you have to do is you have to not be afraid of yourself. That's what it's all about. Not being that's afraid of yourself. Yeah, that's a good point, Karen. Not being afraid um, of your feelings, not being afraid of you knowing who you are. 
yeah. it's coming out coming out your comfort zone as well because the the body the chemical changes because the body is then running the show here if, if you allow if you stay in a comfort zone the body's saying oh no you don't want to do that you don't want to be the only one out there you're going to feel all odd because everybody else is doing something different from you but morally i know what i'm doing is right so i'm not wearing a a thing on my face out of respect for Vincent G Van Gogh who was left here all alone he can't can he <laughs> he's exempt <laughs> but um your body will try and pull you back it's like when you first start uh, go, going back to the driving you're very conscious and think oh I hope I don't crunch the gears I'm gonna look an idiot in front of everybody especially if you've got friends watching you and when on your when you first started driving you feel all nervous and you I don't want to make a mess of this I want to get it right and then you probably do make a mistake from over worrying about it because that feeling is now manifested again that's yeah. how powerful yeah. see you've got a system that is trying to and it's like well why is there a system in place well it's a big game we're the creator we're co-creators that's awesome power what we can create and the way things are going, what's being created here is not right. I don't like it. <laughs> so you need to try and change it. Um, I can't count the amount of times that Karen said to me, I don't like it here. I, I don't like it here. And I'm like, babe, I don't like it either, but don't quit on me now. Um, and none of us do. None of us well, actually like it. realise what it is. It's not much nice, is it? There's only nice that we can create. And a lot of people no, but, are so self-centered and don't understand it that, you know, they just don't get it. No, but if we quit, we're going to miss the ending. You know what I mean? It's like walking out the, the movie theater 10 minutes before the end of the movie. You know, we don't want to do it's that. It's place I trusted. I don't trust it anymore. Well, it's you're right. It's not what I thought it was. It was something, something completely different. No, so you've got, you got to start trusting yourself. You gotta start trusting me. I do trust myself, but I'm saying I don't yeah, know if I like it out there anymore. It's a totally different place to what I thought. You've got to this this is just my opinion. You've got to start trusting me, you've got to start trusting James, you've got to start trusting Amy, you've got to start trusting Gillian. You've got to start trusting people that oh, understand. Yeah, you've got to get back to trusting the people, you mean. Yeah. Yeah. But um the other thing that I was gonna say, I started doing this probably about eighteen months ago. Oh, yeah, um, and we're um, all equal. Yeah, we are all equal. Of course we are. And um, one thing I started doing about 18 months ago, I was given a bit of guidance by, uh, by a, um, a friend, and um, I will pass on that guidance to you and to people listening, is that once you've, once you've had a few sessions of just this, you know, being alone, um, I mean, James is right. You are in danger of falling asleep. I'm not saying that you should go and do this at 10 o'clock at night, but, you know, if you can find an hour during the day just to go and be by yourself when the wife, the wife's at work or down the shops and the kids are at school, and, and you can find an hour, just turn off the TV, turn off your computer, close the bedroom door and just sit on the bed or lie on the bed with your eyes closed just for an hour and just be with yourself. And then once you've, once you've got a bit of experience... Yeah, that's why everybody lives outside in, because they don't really like who they are or they don't know who they are and they need the outside things to make them feel better. Absolutely. Rather than the fact that everything is from yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's looking for outside help, um, which is why you have religion teaching us that, um, you know, Jesus is going to come and save us. And if... You know, if you're not religious and you don't believe that, or Trump's going to come and save you, or or, or Q, QAnon's going to come and save or whatever. We're always looking for this external. We externalize everything because that's what we're taught to to do. Um, but what I'm kind of coming around to is once you've got a bit of experience and you've, um, you've, you've done that a few times and you've spent a few hours by yourself, sitting on the bed, lying on the bed or whatever, and just, just alone with your thoughts, then you can start trying a, a few experiments. And what you've got to do, you've got to find a, um, a serious question that you need a yes or no answer to. You can't ask for an answer beyond yes or no. Maybe you're in a um, relationship with somebody that you're not really sure 
if you if you should stay in that relationship, but maybe you're a little bit worried about quitting that relationship. And that's just a, an example. So what you do is you go to bed that night and you, you go to sleep with that question on your mind. Sh- not should I stay or should I go, because you're not going to get that answer. You've got to ask something like, should I quit this relationship? Or should I stay in this relationship? Um, and then you, I guarantee that you wake up with the answer. You know, should I stay in this relationship? You'll wake up with no. Um, should I get out of this relationship? You'll wake up with the answer yes. You don't know where that answer's come from, but you inherently know that that answer is the answer to the question that you you went to sleep asking. And then um, you can apply that to anything. I, I, I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm, being cocky i've actually progressed a little bit past that now because i've done it so many times um and i ask more detailed questions and invariably i wake up with the answer um and i uh, uh a few weeks ago i went to sleep i've got all these things going through my my head and i woke up the next morning and i think i told you this karen it was like a tsunami had washed over me and I felt this incredible inner peace, something that I have never, ever experienced before in my life. And the crazy thing was, uh, as I said, I'm not religious, but the, um, the crazy thing was that um, this biblical phrase entered my head and it was a peace that passes all understanding. And I just went, whoa. And I burst out laughing. Because I got it. I, I had I, one of those one day. Mine was, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And I'm yes. not into the Bible. So I was like, what? Mm. It was like someone was standing next to me. They said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yeah. And you, 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 you've kind of got to remember that a lot of these biblical phrases, I mean, none of us know the Bible inside out, but there are certain key phrases that we, we know, we've been taught, and they inherently remain in our subconscious. It's like, um, you know, Matt, Matt's from Quantum of Conscience is really, really good at throwing this kind of stuff out. Why does everybody in the world know, row, row, row your boat gently down the street? It's, a, it's not even a song, it's crap. Life is but a dream. Why does everybody in the world know that? nursery rhyme why does everybody in the world know the phrase you know if a tree falls down in the woods and there's nobody there to hear it does it make a sound you know because they're supposed to um be in everybody's head which is the same as what you've just said um forgive them father for they know that what for they know not what they do we are supposed to know that we are supposed to know the piece that saying, passes all on that. If you don't even follow the Bible, Ten Commandments are no. inside you almost. You know you shouldn't hurt anybody, you shouldn't kill anybody. They're really in your subconscious in the first place. Well, that's you, you, now you're talking about natural law. You know, do no harm. I mean, you yeah, know. But most of the Ten Commandments, they're in your, you, you, they would, how you'd want to live your life anyway before you get, well, before you get made into a narcissist and all the rest of the things that happen to you as a human being. But yeah. if you're true, then that, those are in you. They're already there. There's a, uh, an Australian comedian called Jim Jeffries. And this guy is he's brilliant. I absolutely love the guy. He's not famous. He, he's famous in the, in the pubs and clubs, but he's not famous beyond that. Jim Jeffries. And he, he does a whole half hour on religion and God. And he just pulls it to pieces. And then... Being an, an Aussie, and I, I don't want to offend anybody here, but the, the C word in Australia it does not have the same connotations as it does in America or England or, you know, uh, anywhere else in the Western world. And um, this guy actually basically says, look, why do we need Ten Commandments when one is enough? Don't be a C <laughs> or, you know, let's let's let's. Tone it down a bit. Don't be an arsehole. Um, and 
as daft as it sounds, as crazy as it sounds, he sums it all up. And this is something that I struggle to get um, uh, my family and friends in the West to understand about life in China, because that is, that, that's it. That is the whole of the law in China. Do no harm. Do what the F you want to do. Just Nigel. don't hurt anyone. Nigel, no swear words. I didn't swear. I said do what the F you want. Um, do whatever you want, just don't hurt anyone. That is the whole of the law in China. It really is that simple. It comes down to one, you can call it a commandment, you can call it natural law, you can call it whatever you want. But can it I really just, comes... Can I just say something? I'm really enjoying this hangout. We've been going for an, about an hour and a half, 20 minutes. I've got to make a phone call. We can come back and finish this off another day. Well, so, yeah, I'm... Um, you want people to think it's probably quite late in China, isn't it? It's uh, midnight thirty, coming up to midnight thirty, and I've got to be up at seven. So, yeah. James, um, James, you got anything to say? Yeah, um, I was just going to say with the meditation, um, it, it's down to the individual. Some people might find when they first wake up, they're not quite fully conscious. That's a good time to do it. Other people, it might suit to do the middle of the day or, or late in the day. Just Basically, this, this, is, this hangout should be called Waking Up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah same. that's good. For those, this is yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say something there that uh, kind of backs um, what James has just said. If it happens to all of us, like we go to sleep, we wake up, we go to sleep, we wake up, but there are occasions very, very occasionally, that um, when we go to sleep, we go into a really, really deep slumber. And when we wake up, it's like we're coming out of a coma, for want of a better word. It's like, whoa, you, you, you're awake, but you're kind of not quite awake as you normally are. And um, that's kind of what it's like when you wake up from this reality. Um, to understand that everything is plastic, everything's a deception, everything's a lie. You kind of wake up, but you can't quite get your head around it. You go, oh my God, what is going on? And it's almost like you've woken up from a deep, deep sleep or a deep coma. Because you, you, you're awake, you're aware, but you're still not quite, you still can't, can't, can't quite get your head around everything. And that's what needs work. That's what we need to um, to work on. I mean, for me, it's only been close on five years, but the amount of research that I've done, I've probably done more research in the last five years than most um, awakened people have done in the last 20 years. I mean, and, you know, we, we talked about that with Russian vids. Um, uh, Nigel, Nigel, I really don't mean to be rude, but I've got half an hour to make a phone call. Yeah, okay. I've got, a, I've got a, well, I can leave you two talking and then when you've finished, I can turn it off. Well, look, as I say, it's 12.30 and I've got to be up in seven hours, so I'm going to go to bed anyway. So maybe we can... Uh, it's good, it's good. this is for the waking up. To hopefully if people haven't woken up. It's, it's quite well, a big awakening, but anyway. Okay, well, can I ask one question before we close? James, yeah. are you um, are you available same time tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, should should be, yeah. All right, Karen, then why don't we call this one Waking Up Part 1, and then tomorrow we'll do Waking Up Part 2. Yeah, okay. Anyway, thank you so much for the brilliant minds of James and Nigel. Thank You're you. welcome. You're welcome, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys.